Hey, here's another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're going to be talking about getting some good practice for taking a welding test. I've gotten a lot of emails lately from guys who are either practicing at home on their own with their own machine and with their own materials or they're practicing at welding school and uh, it's kind of hard to get your own beveled pipe and some welding schools do not have pipe programs and don't have the budget for beveled pipes. All they have is plates and generally all they do is uh, uh, provide three sixteenths and quarter inch flat stock for their TIG, even their TIG welding and, and uh, the whole welding programs. Uh, you can do you know, T-joints and fillet welds and all that kind of stuff, but it's kind of hard to get good practice at an open butt V-groove weld if you don't have that stuff. So this is how to get some decent practice just using flat bar. And also, uh, what's better is if you can get some plate and put a bevel on it, the exact bevel and uh, joint configuration that the welding test is going to be, uh, that's, that's the next best thing. It's not as good as the actual welding of pipe, but it is the next best thing because the same amperage settings are used and the same techniques are used. And the pipe, what makes pipe harder is just having to reposition your body and keep the right uh, torch and gun angle and stick rod angle and all that stuff. But you got to start somewhere. So uh, some good practices is a plate for taking a pipe welding test or a plate welding test. There are some of those that are uh, done as, as well. So on, uh, you want to prep the joints. You want to get the mill scale off. Uh, especially for any TIG welding, uh, you definitely want to get it shiny, shiny bright metal. Uh, and again, same joint configuration. If you're going to use no land, then don't use a land on your practice. All right, I'm using a, one of these sand and flapper discs here, uh, and it works pretty good for cutting mill scale because you get a new, a new uh, edge all the time. It doesn't load up like some sand and discs do. There's a difference in quality here. I found that this pearl silver line here is cheaper, but the DeWalt brand lasted a lot longer. So, you know, you do what you got to do. Use what you have. Now, once you get a joint, this, this is a corner joint here. And what you want to do is tack this up with about the same gap. And this is good practice for a root pass, just without a bevel, but a 90 degree uh, angle with about an eighth or five thirty second gap. And I'm using a 1 8 rod to tack up these plates here after I clean those up. I'm going to put about a 1 8 gap in that because that's pretty standard for pipe joints. ASME pipe joints generally uh, spec out about a 1 8 gap plus or minus a 30 second. We're going to show you a little bit later on welding a little bit wider gap because that just happens in the field. And uh, But when you're, when you're uh, taking a welding test generally, you're going to be afforded the opportunity to take your time and get get a perfect fit up and you need to get as good a fit up as you can put your best foot forward on any any welding test so I'm just uh, mucking around here getting these joints tacked and uh, you can position these things obviously in any any position you want you know vertical overhead uh, position them on a 45 to, to simulate the coming up the side of a of a 6G joint. If you, if, you're, uh, if you walk the cup or slide the cup or rest the cup, you can practice that. Practice, uh, you know, freehand, and I'm using a, one of my TIG fingers here. Your root pass, you can do side to side, weave pass side to side, or I'm, I'm going to show you a little technique once again, straight forward and straight back with uh, leaving the wire in the puddle. So we're going to do lots of little different things here in a minute, and uh, hopefully we'll learn something. So on a joint like this, it's going to get hot really quick. So this is where the this is where the little TIG finger is going to come in really handy for me. I really don't have any place to prop other than just to slide my hand along the joint, and uh, I can do that uh, pr pretty easily here. So you can practice here. Like I said, if you get your gap right, one eighth to five thirty second probably on this corner joint. It's it's pretty close to the same. Amperage settings and the same. Uh, it looks almost the same as welding an open open butt V groove weld with bevels on it. Took this took about uh, 100 to 105 amps. You can see it's just beginning the keyhole here. So practicing, moving up, dipping, dipping the rod, letting that letting watching those corners just barely start to melt. Keyhole. That's just pretty much the same skill as for a root pass. And here I'm doing the forward and back technique, laying the wire in the puddle all the while. So those are basically the two techniques that we're going to show here in a minute on the uh, on the open butt V groove as well. Once you get the root pass in, you can put your 
second pass, called the hot pass sometimes, but I have found generally about the same amperage that works for a root is good to stick with for the for the second pass because uh, it's easy to get carried away and you screw up the back side. Once you get that done you can set it aside because you can come back later and then start stick welding or whatever because uh, that's often times the TIG welding tests or, or welding certification tests are a TIG root and hot pass and then fill cap stick. So here I've got the plate now. This is this is a little bit better practice, but not everybody has beveled plates, so I wanted to show you just using regular flat bar. And here I'm using that little scoot technique, one eighth gap, a one eighth rod, feather edge, and just forward and back, forward and back, scooting along. This is not sped up or slowed down, this is kind of actual speed. And uh it puts a good looking root pass in. This has actually got two tie ins too on it that uh that that are kind of hard to detect. Okay same gap same settings using using a keyhole dip technique and I, the reason I like this I like both actually the other definitely looks better but this the the keyhole dip technique is a little more realistic because it, it when you're in a when you're laying underneath a pipe and uh, you barely can get a line of sight on it you can, things kinda need to go kinda slow and that kinda gives you a sure way of seeing that it goes in and also, sometimes you just have a big wide gap like this. This is about a three sixteenths wide gap, and you have to dip. You can't. There's, you know, you can't get a three sixteenths wire and lay in there. And your and your one eighth or three thirty two wire just falls through all the time. And if you try to leave it in the puddle, it's very difficult. So just lowering the heat a little bit, dipping, adding adding rod to each side. It's a slow go, but it, it gets it done. Now there is a difference. It looks a little bit better with the lay wire technique and the other the dip technique tends to pull in a little bit more oxygen you have a little bit more islands of silicon laying around but both work once you get the root pass done again about the same heat works for the hot pass within five or ten amps anyway or second pass we'll call it and that is very good practice in preparation for pipe welding TIG and uh, root pass and hot pass and then you can uh, come back and position it any way you want and start your stick welding if that's what the test is that you're preparing for but we'll do some more of that in the next video alright again we use the TIG finger heat shield uh, for, for the free handing of these root passes and it works great thanks for watching weldingtipsandtricks.com